<laughs> but I think one of the things that does unite people really across all spectrums speaking whether of it's foiled. cultural or you know religious or whatever it might be is the fact that the new borderlands movie is just not a good movie uh so kind of the, another uh maybe less serious but uh story is this um if you if you guys tuned in last week like i i wasn't sure about this borderlands movie it's based on a video game i've never played the video game it seems to be real popular it looks fun like fun like the i want to watch like the trailers of the game like, i think it's one like game of the year like it's a big game uh, the movie didn't look good and it turns out that's my uh it wasn't good <laughs> my intuition uh steered me right because this movie uh I, I honestly can't remember a movie i mean like i've reviewed been reviewing movies like every week for like several years like i can't remember a movie that i was as bored in and like as eager just for it to be done. Like, I don't know how many times I kept like, trying to do the math of like, okay, it started at this time, the runtime's this, the trailers went on for this long, like how many more minutes <laughs> until this movie uh, you know, is over so I can finally get out of here. Uh, and it turns out, hey, you know. You were not alone. Yeah, a lot feeling. of people, I, I like to think of myself as spearheading it and people following after me yeah. uh, and kind of coming in line with their opinions because hey, this movie, uh, as of at least right now, has a 9% rating on Rotten Tomatoes and honestly, it's shocking that I got that high. <laughs> uh, I don't know who those 9% of people are, but uh, ooh, I guess to each their own. And like 50% audience score. Uh, so you, there, this is not a case of like, well, the, this is for the fans. The fans liked it. Yeah. Like, no, I mean, no, <laughs> nobody liked it. Nobody liked it. Uh, you got a D plus cinema score, which is uh, not good at all. And uh, it just made no money. It had $8.8 .8 million on the opening weekend with a budget of uh, 110 to 120 plus probably another 15 million for like the marketing campaign, which I'm not a math guy or even a business guy. I'm a cultural guy, but I can tell that that's, that's not good math. If you're a, yeah, that, that's what you would call an epic failure, I think in, in the industry. <laughs> um, and it's, <laughs> or maybe a bomb, is... which has become the norm. So this is sort of where I wanted us to, uh, just briefly, um, just ask the question of like, why are video game movies always so bad? Like it, cause this is yeah. not like some, you know, we we're all shocked that this video game movie didn't do well because they never do well. Uh, I was trying to, I was digging into it a little bit. Uh, and it's, again, Rotten Tomatoes, it has its flaws as, as, a, as a metric system, but it's still good for like, the overall uh, kind of sweeping picture. And as far as I, you know, I could find, only two movies based on video games have ever scored above 70%. On Rotten Tomatoes. One was the uh, the movie Werewolves Within in 2021, which never heard of the movie, never heard of the game. Uh, you know, and then the other one was the Angry Birds movie two in 2019, which is telling. Uh, <laughs> again, if you've never read my review for that movie, it's probably the funniest <laughs> review I've ever done. For uh, I I had thoughts. That's that probably the most like the least professional I've ever been in my reviews. Uh, not a good movie, and that's like. The, the gold standard yeah we can maybe link that uh that <laughs> epic review uh, yeah I, I yeah oh man that, what a movie and some of it i think critics are just wrong like the super mario brothers movie was i thought it was really good it's like 50 percent. it's like you know hey this is just going by what the critics said uh, at least and like, there, there have been some success like the, the the show fallout on amazon and then the last of us on hbo based on video games both uh ten, did well uh, where other ones like halo you know the classic game didn't do well, got canceled after uh, like two seasons. Uh, so what are your thoughts now? Because this, obviously, if there was an easy answer to it, yeah. then we'd have good video game movies because someone would have figured that out. But like, what is it? Like, why, with all the money at their disposal, all this like glorious IP, all yeah. the nostalgia, the built-in fans. And, like, and built-in storylines, too. Like, like, why, what is it about video games that just haven't been able to translate into? Yeah, my, I don't know. I'm, I'm sure there's lots of reasons why but i feel like one is the um I, like again i don't know how these get made exactly but i would imagine the people at the video game property having differences of opinion with the people in the movie making side of it and i feel like probably a lot of this gets sort of neutered by committee if you will and so there may be some great stories and some great premises to begin with but by the time it like passes through all the hands at the studio and then at the the video game company again i don't know how all that works out but i imagine there's some there's some veto power on on both sides and i don't know maybe that's part of you know like art can't be really made by committee and because you can usually tell like again if you've never noticed this look for it next time you go to a, a movie theater like because they always show you know so like the you know the opening like the companies and like like some of these movies, like 
it just goes on and on. Like it's, yeah. you know, by Sony and Bad Robot and you know Five Star Productions and Legendary, like all these different points. Like yeah. how many different companies were involved in making this hour and forty? And I movie? think yeah, I think if you see that, that's usually a sign that like this may not be your favorite film. And so I don't know. My guess is there's probably a lot that gets uh, sort of quashed in in that side of it because there are so many competing interests and just so many interested parties that have power to veto stuff. And so I think probably a lot of the power of, of the story and of, of the cinematography and everything probably ends up on the chopping block. Yeah, I, I do think sort of that corporate stuff, and it's not even just like, you know, that there's other influences, but it's like influences by very big and powerful, you know, video yeah. game. Like, it's have like, a lot you of, do this or this movie doesn't get made. Yeah, and like it's like, just, oh, okay, you know, well. So I think there is some of that. Um, but, but I also just think there's, there's got to be something to just the video games as a, as a medium. And that's sort of where, like, as a Christian, I, why I think it is relevant of just, you know, hey, does it really matter if video game movies do well or not? Like, I mean, if you're a Christian that loves video games, it does. But, like, yeah. you know, maybe not. But I think it does. I don't know. I think it's important to to just to like discern like what is resonating with people. What is it like? What attracts them to video games, but not to these movies? Like what makes these games so compelling that we lose? Like what are movies not doing? And I do think the obvious one is just the like the divide between a kind of active and passive. Yeah. Like watching a movie, kind of passively watching this play out, um, is different than like I got my little joystick, and I'm I'm the one fighting the bad guys. You know, it's right. It's, it's a different experience than it is. You know, and obviously, like, hey, people also watch other people play video game, and there's like. So not the, yeah, the, the whole esports thing like, is pretty big too. You know, like, so, so there is like, I don't think it's that it's as simple, uh, simplistic as that. But it does seem though like it's almost two audiences. Like I think sometimes yeah. we sort of lump all of like pop culture and especially like video games and movies because they're sort of similar. They both tell stories like as sort of one thing, uh, but it seems like clearly there's differences, and I, and I think that should also inform us as Christians. Like there's been a lot of attention lately to movies. Like we, you know. I mean, I like guess we don't review video games. We review, we do movies. But we should. We should do. Uh, I would, honest. I would sign up for, uh, you know, for for work I'll, purposes. I'll put, yeah. Uh, <laughs> uh, log in some. I, I may need to buy whatever the latest console is and yeah, yeah, just yeah. for the sake of drowned endless uh, hours. The kingdom of, of God of reviews. Yeah. <laughs> um, this is this is research. Um, but even like we also make Christian movies. Like, you know, almost every month we're getting one or two faith. Yeah. We got another one coming out. You know, next week. And but I, I know there sort of are video game. Like Christian video games, but like they're not very, games very that people few. play. Yeah, <laughs> they're, they're not necessarily. They're still in the like. Maybe it's, they're just struggling yeah. behind. Like they're just. I know there's some stuff in the works that seems rather interesting on on sort of the let's say Christian video game side, um, but yeah, that they're not sort of cracking the the code necessarily yet on, on the video game side. But I, I think it is interesting that just because there's a huge audience for this game. Like those audiences does not do not correlate to fans of or attendees to its related movie, because I think people maybe are just not interested in seeing the movie version of the game that they love and play because they love and play the game. Like, why should they go? So yeah, it, or if it's, it's also, different, like it doesn't live up to their. Yeah, it's like, I'm just not gonna. You know, that's not my Borderlands or whatever it is. Yeah, like, and I think it's also just the design of it is is probably also totally different because like video games especially if it's like first person games like they're designed to empower the the player of the game not you know not this like rich character that you get to watch necessarily and so like so even i think designing like how the main characters of a video game are i would imagine is very different than like the main characters of a movie they're just it's just a totally different experience I yeah think. and i just wonder like, if there's thing to that for christians like to to latch on to because like video game movies they stink they're not doing well for the most part like video games have yeah. never been d done better like they're you know the game sale like they, they make more money than like hollywood does like you know the video game industry yeah is like the biggest you know going entertainment thing and like it's like but i feel like our approach to to culture to we, we we fall back on sort of the, the film mindset of like, it's more telling like we're going to have a story when it's very much sort of that you know we're active they're passive where i think we maybe miss out on the opportunities of like clearly there's also a, this like yearning or this need to like 
be engaged, like actively participate yeah. in it. And like, you know, the thing that makes video games so compelling for so many people, you know, even as they, you know, even as like the movie industry seems to like be tapering off more, like, you know, how can we sort of like, you know, direct our approach to, to culture and to people and like the gospel in a way that like appeals to those, you know, innate desires rather than just sort of, the, you know, the more traditional, like just yeah. tell them a story with a Christian theme in it. Um, well, I think it's a huge untapped uh, potential for um, for Christians to to be active in, um, and I, I mean I think hopefully in, in the near future we'll we'll start to see some of that, and I think uh, yeah I think there's a lot that, that that could be done in that space that I think has been largely ignored um, by the Christian community. Yeah, and I'd love to. Uh, I know we have some. Uh, we keep talking about how we're going to have some guests on here, and we are. We're still working on that. Is just uh, you know the technology and stuff. But I'd love to have some like Christian video game designers in because I feel like there's so much to that. It's like how do you how do you actually crack that code and use the you know yeah. use video games in that way. Mm-hmm.